guys, my name is Maddie or Books with Maddie and today we're going over the rest of my reading plans for 2020. <laughs> what? Okay, I've been neglecting Cheech Billin the past couple videos. I have this Thanksgiving-esque sock. I wanted to do it like a hat. That is ideal. I mean, I could do the scarf thing again. Scarf. Cheech Villain is back better than ever. He has a new scarf. It's Thanksgiving. It's also a sock again. And he's gonna go right here today. Gonna watch over us as always. Okay, so today we're going over books that I need to finish before the end of 2020. We're going to go over the challenges that I have like been trying to complete over the year, what books I have to read to complete those and like which ones I think I'm gonna be able to complete. In addition, I'm gonna go over some of the plans for the end of the year videos for this channel. Basically how this channel is going to look towards the end of the year. Yeah, so we're gonna start out with the challenges that I have decided to participate in this year. So obviously the 2020 reading challenge situation, like just the Goodreads, I participated in that. My goal was 65 books and I've exceeded that. So that one is check. Other challenge that I was participating in is the alphabet challenge. I started this like halfway through the year and I had already gotten like most of them done. But basically what this is, is you try to read a book that starts with the first letter of every letter of the alphabet. There are like stipulations because that's really tricky. So like, for letters like X, Y, Q, Z, like those kind of letters, you can use like part of an author's name. So like for Z, for example, I used The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak, but like you could also use like uh, something by Zadie Smith or something like that. Like that's another option that you could do or like it could be the first name or the last name. Pretty sure like it's, it's quite a personal challenge. So like you could probably like extend the rules however much you want. I know like for X, for me personally, I'm having the hardest time with that one. So I'm gonna be reading the Poet X for that one because that's like the only one that I could possibly think of. So I'm gonna be talking about that one first. So let me actually be prepared for a second. So I keep track of all of this in my reading journal, which I will be doing a tour of at the end of the year. So I have this spread basically where I keep track of the entire alphabet challenge. The only letters that I do not have completed are I, K, Q, X, and Y. So there's five books that I need to complete for this. I do have a plan of what I'm gonna read for each of them. So for I, I have Inland by Tia Obrecht, I think is how you pronounce the name. I'm gonna be listening to that as an audiobook. I'm about like 10% of the way through right now, but I kind of neglected it and then my audiobook expired on Libby, so I have to wait for it to come back. It should be back like available in a couple days, so I'm planning on reading that. K, I'm planning on reading The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. This is quite a chonker, but it is the only book that I have that has a K in it. That's going on my TBR. For Q, I actually haven't decided yet. I do have a book called The Quiet Room. There's literally no cover. <laughs> it's a nonfiction book about someone's struggle with schizophrenia, I believe, but also there is an, another book called Quiet, and I can't remember who wrote it, but I think it's about, it's also nonfiction about being an introvert or something like that. I don't know, but that's also sounded very interesting, but I would read that either as an ebook or as an audiobook. For X, uh, The Poet X, which I have reserved on Libby, and it'll be available in five weeks. So that'll be like right at the tail end of the year. And then Y, I have The Young Elites by Marie Lu, which I am planning on reading before the end of the year as well. Hopefully this month, although this month has been probably my worst reading month of the entire year. I think I finished a book and a half this entire month. I'm filming this the Tuesday before this video will come out so hopefully I will have read at least another book or two before this comes out but who knows so yeah those are that is for that challenge the alphabet challenge the other challenge is the 2020 pop sugar challenge I don't know a lot of people who are participating in this but if you don't know it's basically okay so pop sugar I believe I don't really know what that is but I think it's like one of those like news sources like BuzzFeed but like maybe <laughs> i really don't know that's the that's how i comprehend it is like a similar source like a hub of like news and like activities basically they have like a reading section of it and every year i believe they have like 50 prompts and you try to fill out each prompt for the year the whole year you try to fill out but okay also but there's like more to it there's like 
40 prompts that are like just the regular prompts and there's 10 other prompts at the end that are like a little bit more difficult and then you can add those if you'd like to. I of course chose to and I regret it now. So I'm trying to complete that. I can't remember, I think I have nine prompts left that I haven't completed. I also decided to start this in the middle of the year, which was a mistake. Don't do that. <laughs> It was a mistake and also I thought like in the middle of the year I was like oh I have six more months and I like did not prioritize it at all and I ended up like filling out a bunch of them but like I have nine left to do and help like that's not okay fortunately inland which I'm reading for the alphabet challenge also counts for one of the prompts for the pop sugar challenge which is read a western inland is considered western I don't know what westerns are and I don't think I want to venture into that category quite yet in my life. So that is where I'm sticking with Inland. So I'm going to go over the nine prompts that I have to complete. And then I'm going to show you the books that I'm planning on reading for them. So the first one is a book with an upside down image on the cover. And for this I'm reading Blood and Honey. I have Blood and Honey with me, but I don't have the dust jacket on, funnily enough. But it has like an upside down snake. There's like lists for like every single one of the prompts, which shows you like which books count, although you can count whatever you want. And the Blood and Honey was on that, so I chose it. By the way, let's like take a quick moment to like mourn my excitement. Blood and Honey was my most anticipated release of this year. I was the most excited I've ever been. I'm not really one to like keep up with new releases, especially series, especially fantasy series, but I was gung-ho for this. I was like, Serpent and Dove is my new identity. And what the actual crap is blood and honey? I did not sign up for this. I did not sign up for this. I am like 71% of the way through and I have been reading this book since the day I received it on September 1st. Or it was probably a couple of days after September 1st because shipping. But like, I received it the first week of September and I'm still reading it. What is happening to me? I cannot get through this book. It is painful. It is physically painful for me to read Blood and Honey. I'm in physical pain. I know the ending isn't good. I've seen the complaints and the reviews saying that I know it's not gonna be good. So why would I wanna finish it is the question. Anyway, that's where I'm at with that. Um, the other one is an anthology. So what I'm reading for that is a language. Oh, what is it? The Language of Thorns by Lee Bardugo. I'm not quite sure who this is an anthology with. Perhaps the artist, but it counts as an anthology on the list of anthologies under the Pop Sugar Challenge. So I'm going with it. But I am reading an actual legitimate. Not that this isn't an actual legitimate anthology. But like this one is like actually like an anthology but I am reading this for a different prompt which is a book with 20 in the title and you can choose any like 20 through 29 because it has the word 20 and this is our stories our voices 21 why uh, authors get real about injustice empowerment and growing up female in America I am a little bit of the way into this so far it's pretty good I mean each story is like very different so I can't like judge the book as a whole. The ones that I read so far I've like reasonably enjoyed. So yeah, I'm planning on finishing this this week hopefully, but we'll see. Next, I have to read uh, one uh, prompt in a book in a country that starts with C. I have a couple options for this, but right now I'm planning on reading The False Prince by Jennifer A. Nielsen. This takes place in a place, a country that's called Carthia or something like that which sets the C but I could also read uh, I have a book that takes place in Canada what's it called hello station 11 that that's about a pandemic it takes place in Canada then oh get this get this there's also a prompt call that's a fiction or non-fiction book about a world leader and guess what book was under that category the knife of never letting co why did I say it like that? I don't know. <laughs> okay, this is also, if you recall, what I'm reading for the alphabet prompt set with K. Okay. <laughs> Next. A book with gold, silver, or bronze in the title. I am reading Stay Gold by Toby McSmith, which is also the Spellbound Book Club book of the that we're reading this month. Uh, have I started it? Nope. 
but I hope it'll be great. I have heard great things about this book so far and I'm very excited to get into it. Isn't this book just like aesthetically pleasing? Like it just really is like the pink and the blue, the gold is all very aesthetically pleasing. But is this book about gymnastics? For some reason I think it is, but actually that feels wrong. Why do I feel like it's about gymnastics? It's definitely, yeah, I know there's a, a transgender character, which I'm very excited to see that representation. Why do I feel like it's about gymnastics? It's not about gymnastics. No, there's no gymnastics involved. I have no idea why I thought it was about gymnastics. Okay, okay. A book set in Japan is the other one that I wanted to read. I was planning on reading War Cross for this. Not that I own War Cross, but I was gonna buy it. But as I'm trying to stop buying books, I realized Flame in the Mist is, takes place in Japan, apparently. So I'm going to be reading this, which I've been wanting to read this. I'm so excited that I'm finally getting the chance to. For some reason, it's thicker than I remember. How, what is the, okay, it's like 400 pages. It's just like seeing this stack is quite overwhelming. And then the last prompt that I have to read is a book set in the 1920s, which it surprises me that I have not read a book set in the 1920s yet this year. Am I forgetting something important? But I did my research and I really don't think I have. I actually haven't read a lot of historical fiction this year, so that's probably why. But I found, I have um, this book called Old Baggage by Lis Le Lisa Evans, which takes place in 1928 and it follows the women's suffragette movement. Wait a second. Oh, wait a second. I believe this takes place in England because 1928 wouldn't make sense. Heckled Winston Churchill. That's England. Okay, that's actually very exciting because, oh, she, okay, this is take. okay, this was marketed to me as it takes place in America, which I'm much more interested in the suffragette movement in England because I've never learned about it. Okay, that's great. That was very confusing. I had a moment there where I was confused, but I'm, it's fine now. I'm fine. Okay, so that's all the books that I have to read by the end of the year. That is not including school books which there are many of those as well, which I don't even know off the top of my head which ones those are. So now we're gonna move on to what are the plans for this channel for the rest of the year? And to be honest, I don't know. I've made a video addressing Deck of TBR things. Deck of TBR is kind of, I'm debating whether or not to do it at all in December because I need to read those specific books and I guess it will depend on how fast, like how many I get through this month. Okay, so there's 10 total, including the combination of prompts. So I believe there's like 10 that I need to finish by the end of the year and that is including Inland and whatever my Q book is. So I believe there's 10 that I need to read by the end of the year, which is, it's not a lot considering I'm like halfway through two of them and a lot of them are pretty short. It just feels overwhelming because I don't want to lose. <laughs> but realistically, this is how I've decided to format the end of the year for this channel. So I'm going to continue kind of making like end of the year videos, but my wrap ups for this entire year. So like my top 10 favorite books of the year and then my stats for the entire year will be up in January. So January will be uh, I'll probably talk a little bit about like 2021 reading plans, but it'll mostly be just focusing on 2020 books. So I'm going to go over like my favorite books of 2020, my least favorite books of 2020, things like that. And then I possibly might do a video of like honorable mentions slash really disappointing books. I'm not really sure yet, but I know that some people end their reading year in November. So their reading year is basically from December to November. And I, I've considered doing that, but I kind of just like 12 year calendar is kind of like, you know, so I'm not sure exactly what, but I mean, December will probably be pretty normal. I had a goal in mind to try to uh, produce two videos a week again. I was doing that um, when I first started my channel. It's really fun. I really liked being able to produce that amount of content, especially because I have been tagged in a couple things. I've got like a backlist of tags that I'm supposed to be doing that people have tagged me in. So I was thinking of maybe doing like a tag Tuesday to like get all of those tags 
done including like I could do the end of the year tag but I'm not really sure yet so I might I might do like a tag Tuesday situation or maybe tag Wednesday because I usually um, post on Wednesdays if I am gonna post twice a week but yeah it's just so there's just like a lot of content that I have planned for the end of the year and I want to be able to fit all of that in and so that might be why I have to do two videos a week which would I mean yeah, that'd be great, but really stressful probably, <laughs> especially with finals. So I'm not sure if it'll be consistently twice a week, every week, but we'll honestly just see. Yeah, I believe that's it. So those are my reading plans for the end of the year. Those are the challenges I need to complete. Those are kind of what this channel is going to look like for the rest of the year and the beginning of next year. Quick update though, I've also, since I filmed my deck of TBR video, I've seen some more suggestions. I've thought of more things to do to make it a little bit more interesting and more fair and not just kind of digging myself into a hole over, over and over for deck of TBR. So it, it, it's definitely gonna look a little bit different in January. I'm, I'm really working hard on that and I'm gonna be working harder on that during my, my Christmas break. I mean, we'll see what, what happens with that. I'm not sure what that's gonna look like in December. But I guess we'll see. I'm as curious as you are to how this is going to turn out. Wish me luck on those books that I need to complete by the end of the year. And I wish you luck on all of your plans for the end of the year. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you if you enjoyed. I noticed like a big percentage of the people who watch my videos actually aren't subscribed. So if you're one of those people, consider subscribing. We're like almost at 600 when I'm filming this. Today we're at 598, which is wild and insane and totally unexpected. So thank you so much for all of the support and the love. Comment down below what books you're planning on reading for the rest of the year and what challenges you're participating in that you need to complete. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great week and I hope you have a great life and I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.